watching Morning at NTV. A very good morning. Welcome to our tech note discussion. Of course, uh, as we wait on later, we shall be talking to retired colonel Dr. Kiza Besige, who will be speaking to us on Uganda's uh, preparedness and response to health crises. That is, of course, in line with an outbreak of Ebola and uh, other diseases that we are grappling with as a country, including malaria. But first, let's look at how we can improve food systems uh, through agroecology. I'm joined by Joshua Ayuka, the head of programs at Pelham. A very good morning, Mr. Joshua Ayuka. Good morning to you. It's a pleasure to be here. Good morning, viewers. Thank you, and you're welcome to the program. What is agroecology, and how does it relate to the food system? But I should be able to give a preamble before you answer that question. Take us through what the food system is right now before we can understand how agroecology is going to help us improve it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, like I said, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, well, I think food system is a very interesting uh, conversation right now mm. because uh, we are seeing a lot of relationships yeah. among different actors, among different sectors that we need to broaden the conversation beyond value chains mm. because we are seeing, uh, and a classic example actually is for example what is happening right now, mm. the Ukraine war and how it has affected the issues of food insecurity in Africa. That's right. So it shows the relationship between the different actors and the players and uh, basically in the broader ecosystem. Mm. So uh, from the Uganda perspective, uh, the food systems conversation is looking at how do we uh, address the challenges we are faced with in a more systemic way. Mm. Because uh, the easiest way is looking at, you know, addressing the symptoms, if I may say. Mm. For example, there is uh, hunger in uh, Karamoja. Let's take relief, you know. Yeah. There is uh, maybe uh, the, an outbreak of pests and diseases let us uh, maybe avail pesticides and the like. But the systems approach is trying to look at the, what are the root causes, what mm. are the different factors that are playing in, and what do we need to do at the different levels, at the production level, mm. at the market level, mm -hmm. at policy level, and how do these get connected to address all these complex challenges that we're faced with, okay. including climate change. So yeah. what does agroecology change in this equation? Well, agroecology is more of a systems approach. Mm. And that is the, the conversation we've been having. Agroecology is not a farming system. Ah, okay. uh, it is basically a way in which uh, the players within the food systems can design uh, our farming and food systems in a way that they are ecologically, in terms of environmentally, mm. socially, and economically viable, mm. in terms of responding to the different complex issues that we are faced with. Uh, as you know, for example, we are faced with a uh, loss of biodiversity mm. increasingly we are seeing more and more of our say uh, diverse even on the plate mm. in terms of the, the diversity that we eat vis-a-vis -vis what used to be at mm. uh, is reducing uh, we are seeing issues of climate change and we know that agriculture is a major player when it comes to issues of climate change mm. uh, especially when you talk about the conventional agriculture system that's right so we need to look at how do we transform our food systems to be responsive to the complex challenges we are having. Mm. One, the issues of low productivity, uh, the issues of, uh, you know, uh, like I've talked about climate change, uh, I've talked about uh, low incomes and poverty among the smaller farming communities. Mm. So how do we as actors try to address things from the business, I would say the business unusual. Mm. Because we've seen that if the business as usual agriculture has brought I would say very many challenges mm. that we need not to just look at, say, increasing production and productivity, but look at how do we design our agricultural systems to be responsive to, be responsive. to the change uh, to the changes uh, within our uh, our country. Okay, taking yeah. into consideration the designing of uh, agriculture systems to be responsive, as you say, in the West we've seen uh, the evolution of uh, GMOs yeah. as something that has uh, been a little bit controversial in yeah. being taken on across the other uh, parts of the world, including the third world, where we believe that we are sufficiently uh, able to sustain ourselves organically without necessarily having to adopt GMOs. In agroecology, what is the place of GMOs? Well, I would say in agroecology, there is no place of GMOs. Mm -hmm. Uh, one, um, you see, we have to think about issues of sovereignty as well. That's right. Seed and food sovereignty. Mm. 
Um, in terms of our capacity to develop these technologies and the capacity of the farmers to depend on them sustainably is quite questionable. Mm. And also we must appreciate that we have a lot of technologies, even through conventional breeding, mm. that are still out there and have not yet even been accessed uh, by the smallholder farmers or even utilized. That's right. So uh, uh, the, the issues of GMOs are quite uh, complex, mm. in my opinion. They pose, there is still a lot of research that needs to be done in terms of the health implications, in terms of uh, issues on, uh, on, on biodiversity concern, the, the effect they may have, in terms of the farmers uh, having to depend on external sources of seed, mm. because once they come in and they contaminate our, our native seeds, mm. then we might find a situation where uh, farmers cannot, you know, just move on with their own production systems. Mm. They have to depend on the sources, other external sources of seed, which to me is a bit of a challenge. Because the reason I ask that is because most of uh, the uh, farmers across the country have already encountered yeah. some sort of uh, GMO or uh, conditioned seeds, so to speak. And uh, it's quite uh, challenging to yeah. revert uh, to the previous organic seeds. And it's a bit of a problem. I don't know whether this should be addressed within the uh, ages of uh, Pelham or it's something that we should look to narrow. Uh, in Kawanda? Well, um, publicly, mm. uh, well, there, there is no uh, GMOs, at least, are not yet. Uh, no, yet. Publicly. Officially, officially. officially <laughs> they are not yet uh, on, on the market. Yeah. They are not yet accessible mm. by the farmers. But yes, we know because we have porous borders, first of all. Yeah. So uh, many of these uh, seeds uh, may, may crop in. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is work being done by, I would say, by NARO, mm -hmm. especially the Plant Genetic Resources Center, uh, together with other partners like Biversity International and Pelham, yeah. to establish uh, community seed banks okay. and the National Gene Bank to ensure that it is uh, re reinforced, mm -hmm. such that we have most of our native uh, varieties conserved. conserved so yeah, that in case of any loss, we have the capacity true. to be able to, to bounce back. All right. Yeah. What's the National Agroecology Actors Symposium and uh, when is it? What's going to be discussed? Well, the National Agroecology Actors Symposium is a space. Mm. We are we're having the fourth edition this year. It's basically a space of agroecology actors. Like I've told you, it's a whole system with yeah. different players at the different levels where we come together annually mm. to share experiences, uh, to dialogue, uh, to, to, you know, to find uh, or propose solutions to government on how we can transform our food systems mm. to be more sustainable and ecological. Okay. So our symposium is this Thursday. Uh, it's going to be at Silver Springs Hotel mm. uh, in Bugolobi. And uh, basically looking at how do we transform our current food systems to be responsive mm. to the challenges we're having, climate change, uh, okay. loss of diversity and all that. All right. How do I take part in that? Well, there will be virtual participation, mm -hmm. but also uh, there will be physical participation. Ah. And on the, also on the 25th, we have a climax, which is the indigenous uh, food and seed fair. And this is basically a space which we are going to be using to showcase mm. the value and the potential we have in, as Uganda okay. through our rich uh, uh, cultural heritage of our food. So you can also participate by coming and, and, and seeing the foods that we have. Some of them, mm. you've not seen them in many years. All uh, right. I'll make sure I'm there just so I see if you have uh, uh, accepted or uh, adopted Talajan foods into the whole mix. Definitely. Uh, thank you very much, Joshua Ayuka, the head of programs at Pelham for the insight. Uh,